Amanda for such a warm welcome. Listen, I was absolutely thrilled when Amanda asked me to speak about list building and share my insights and strategies with all of you. And there were two reasons why I was so excited to do so. Number one is that I am a huge fan of Faster Way to Fat Loss. Not only did I do the six week challenge, holy cow, that kicked my butt, but I also am a proud VIP member. So I am a huge fan of the Faster Way community. The second reason I was thrilled to be invited is that I love talking about list building. If we haven't yet met, I teach entrepreneurs how to grow their businesses online. I primarily focus on list building as well as teaching you how to take your knowledge, know-how, and skill set and turning that into a scalable digital course that you can sell over and over and over again. So that's what I do in my own business. But I really do believe that it all starts with list building. I often say that the energy of your business is directly tied to the strength of your email list. When I say energy, I mean your community, your engagement, your profits, your growth. Everything you do in your business becomes easier when you have that foundation of list building that you can rely on. It becomes an asset in your business. Now, some of you might already have an email list. You might be growing that regularly. Others might have maybe a really small email list and maybe your mom and your brother or sister are on that email list as well. Or maybe you don't have an email list. Maybe you rely on social media and that's kind of getting you through, getting you to move forward. Well, here's the deal. When I teach my students how to grow a thriving, engaged email list, I always say that social media is powerful. It's a fantastic tool in order to grow your audience and to attract an audience. However, when you build your business using social media only, meaning you don't have an email list or you don't focus on this building, when you grow your business only using social media, Well, you're building your business on rented land. At any time, Mark Zuckerberg could come in, change that algorithm like he's done in the past, and boom, the way you've done business has completely changed overnight. It's a risky move to rely only on social media. Now, you can use social media to build your email list, and there's other ways to build your email list as well. We'll talk about it. But when you have an email list, you have an asset in your business that you control. It is yours. And at any given time, you can email your list and you can actually generate profits if you do list building right. So if you're looking to have more confidence in your business, if you want to make sure you always have a way to move forward and generate profits, then focus on growing your email list. The more intentional you are at growing an engaged email list, let me tell you, not only will you have more confidence, but it's easier to grow your business. It's easier to project your revenue. It's easier to plan your promotions. It's easier to connect with your audience. So I also want to say before I get into my strategies and tips that I want to share with you, I also know that the Faster Way team supplies every month a roadmap to all of you and you get an opportunity to actually send people to, let's say, a challenge or a sugar detox or whatever it might be that month. And so that's a great list building tool as well. So from the Faster Way team, you are getting list building opportunities because I know then you get the opportunity to get the list of all the people that signed up for that month's special freebie. But I want to talk about that a little bit. You get this great opportunity through Faster Way, but I want to talk to you about you growing your email list based on your niche whether it be helping people lose weight or helping people stay healthy or helping people through beating cancer or whatever it might be that you do specifically. I want to focus today on your business because the stronger you make your business, the more you grow your email list with your own content, your own lead magnets slash freebies, we'll talk about it, the stronger your business is overall. 
And the stronger your business is, the more you get to do with the Faster Way team, the more bigger results that you will see. But it really comes down to your content, your freebies, your foundation, so that everything you get from the Faster Way team, it becomes even more powerful, even easier to put out into your community and you start seeing bigger results. So I wanna talk about you and your business today. Are you ready? Are you game? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I've got slides, I always have slides. So you'll see me on camera like this, kind of in this little circle here. And when I'll jump on camera when I really wanna punctuate a point, or I'll just go full slide so that as I'm teaching, you can follow along and see the examples that I share. So let's go ahead and dive in. This is how to grow an email list of highly qualified leads every single day. Now, remember what I said earlier, the success of your business, the energy of your business is directly tied to the strength of your email list. I want you to really start to focus on how can I grow my email list every single day? And that's what this training is going to help you do. Now, I want you to imagine something with me here. Imagine what it would feel like if you knew without a doubt that you had an asset in your business that could generate revenue for you at any time. Meaning, let's say that something came up in your life, something personal, and you needed to bring money in pretty quickly to take care of it. Imagine if you had a thriving, engaged email list and you thought, you know what? I'm going to put together a quick promo. I'm going to put together a few coaching packages and I'm going to offer it to my audience and they could take advantage of it for the next few months. You could email your list and you could make money right then that day. That's the power of an email list when done right, when it's engaged, when you are their go-to source. So imagine if you had this asset in your business that could actually generate money for you over and over again. Be powerful, right? All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna get there. Growing your email list means you no longer have to struggle to make your business work, but instead, everything you create now has the ability to generate revenue in your business over and over again. Let's jump into step number one. I've got three steps for you, and here's what I'll tell you before we jump in. These steps are fairly simple. They're not going to blow your mind However, I want you to ask yourself, am I doing this? So a lot of the times you're like, yeah, I've heard that before. And then I always jump in and say, okay, but are you actually doing this on a consistent basis? These are the three steps that I use every single day in my business. And I have for about 11 years. One thing I know for sure is that I would not have a multi-million dollar business without my email list. My email list is literally the number one revenue generator. And these are the steps that I've taken over the years to grow my email list consistently. Now, the name of this presentation is how to grow your email list every single day. And that's what these three steps will help you do. Are you ready to dive in? Let's do this. Step number one, create weekly original content. So the secret ingredient to growing a steady stream of leads, email subscribers, is consistent, original content. Now, what does consistent, original content look like? Well, it's fairly simple, but I'm going to give you a little hint here. Most of your competitors are not willing to do what I'm going to show you right now. Are you ready? Okay, so consistent original content looks like this. Either a weekly blog or a weekly video show. This is my good friend Marie Forleo. She's got a great video show or a podcast. This is my podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy. So weekly original content means that either you're blogging every week or you're doing a video show every week, or you're doing a podcast every single week. Now, when I propose this to my students, the first question I get asked is, what weekly do I really need to do it weekly? Listen, I post on social media about every day. Like, does that count? No, not exactly. So the thing that's most important for you to understand is that 
When you are creating content consistently, you become the go-to source for your audience. They know what to expect and when to expect it. So for example, every Thursday, rain or shine, you can hear a new podcast of mine. And that is literally how I've grown my audience. And then from my podcast, I will then grow my email list. I might give away a freebie, a lead magnet from the podcast, and that's how I'm generating leads every single day. We'll talk about some really good lead magnet ideas for your business, but before we get there, I want to really hit home the importance of that consistency. Now, if you're not doing this at all, maybe you start out with every other week and then you lead up to every single week. Now, another question I often get asked is, well, which one should I choose, a blog or a video show or a podcast? All of them are valid. All of them can be incredibly powerful. It really depends on what you gravitate towards and what your audience gravitates towards as well. So if you love to write and you know your audience would devour your blog posts every week when you make them really good and you enjoy blogging, then go for it. If you love to be on video, which is not me, it's not my favorite, but if you love to be on video and you would commit to doing a new video every week and teaching a new tip or a trick, then go for it. But if you're anything like me and you're kind of a slow writer and you definitely don't want to be on video all the time, but you love to talk, podcasting. Podcasting is a great way to reach your audience and to reach a bigger audience than you have access to now. I always tell my students that with iHeartRadio and Spotify and iTunes, holy heck, you've got these amazing platforms that are going to push your content out there. And then of course you can promote your podcast to your audience and on social media. So I know it might feel like a big commitment right now if you're not doing it, or maybe you have a blog or have a podcast, but you're kind of just not doing it consistently, then I want you to recommit and say, I'm going to choose one. And my goal, my end game is once a week, I'm going to get that content out there. When, let me go full screen real fast. When I was first starting out, uh, podcasting, I would do it like once a month. And I was telling my friend, this is way too much work. I'm not getting a lot of downloads. Uh, It's not growing my audience. Like this doesn't work. And my friend who was a uh, prolific podcaster, someone who had been doing it for a while, he said, well, are you doing it weekly? I'm like, no, I'm not doing it weekly. That feels like a lot. He said, you show up weekly for your audience you become their go-to source and you show up the same day every week. So for me, it's Thursday morning, rain or shine podcast. So my audience knows to expect it. They know what they're going to get from me. They know I'm going to show up for them. And so I am their go-to source. And so when I do promote, they are ready to buy because I've put in so much value every single week. There's value in your business, there's value in showing up consistently because it pays off when you're ready to promote. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's get back to it. Let's go full screen. And this is something that's gonna help you immensely. You might be saying, okay, Amy, I'll do it, but then what am I going to podcast about every week or blog about or do a video about? And the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, what are the five questions that you get asked all the time from your community and from your customers? So let's say you're at a conference. I you know, remember back in the day when we could all go to a conference together in person. So let's say you're at a conference and you walk up to someone, you start a little chit chat, and then they say, what do you do? and then you tell them what you do, and if they're interested in that topic, what's a question they often ask you? What kind of questions do you often get asked? You write it down, I want you to brainstorm some questions you often get asked, and write down five things. Those are your first five blog posts, first five podcasts, or first five videos. This is how you get things going. So just know that there's a lot of content that you can talk about in your blog or podcast. You just need to give yourself a little time to brainstorm. I'm going to give you one other little secret that helps my students immensely. When you are thinking about where your audience is right now, what do they need help with right now? 
I want you to think about what you eventually want to sell down the road, whether it be um, promoting through Faster Way or something in your own business. What is it that you want to sell to them? And so before they're ever ready to buy, before they're ever ready to join a six-week challenge, before they're ever ready to put down their money and say, I'm in, where can you serve them way before that? So I always say there's an invisible bridge. Where they're at now, they walk across an invisible bridge. When they get to the other side, they're ready to buy. So I often ask the question, what does your audience need to know, be aware of, understand, or believe before they're ever ready to buy from you. One more time. What does your audience need to know, be aware of, understand, or believe, believe in themselves or believe in something bigger before they're ever ready to say, okay, here's my money, let's do this. So if you think of that question, Often ask yourself that question. There's a lot of content in there that you can create for podcast episodes or blog posts or a freebie, which we're going to talk about in a moment. There's a lot of, there's a lot of content in there that you can create before people are ever ready to buy from you. That's what you create on a consistent basis. Okay, let's keep moving forward. There are three rules to help you get momentum quickly with your original, consistent, weekly content. Number one, don't switch from platform to platform. Don't do a blog one week and then a video the next and then maybe throw in a random podcast episode the following week. I want you to choose just one. Are you going to be a blogger? Are you going to have a video show? Or are you going to have a podcast? And you just consistently stay with that platform so that your audience knows when you show up, how you show up, and where you're showing up. It really is powerful when you get that consistent. Number two, stack the value. This should be some of your best content. Don't hold back. So I don't want you to be worried about giving away too much or giving away your secrets for free. Believe me, you have a lot of content in you. You just don't know it yet. So really show up for your audience. Give them some of your best stuff in your weekly podcast or blog posts or your video show. And number three, acknowledge their pain and desires. Your weekly content should speak directly to the challenges and struggles or desires of your audience. So the key here is to get to know them even more. So pay attention. When I was a little girl in second grade, I would, my dad would drive me to school and I would get out of the car and he'd say, Amy, Amy, wait. Like, I swear he did this every day. Amy, Amy, wait. And I'd look back, I had my lunch pail and my backpack, and I'd look back at my dad and he'd say, it's better to listen than to talk. It's better to listen than to talk. And I remember that even today as an entrepreneur, and I think, am I listening to my audience? They will tell you where they're struggling. They will tell you what they want. And they're going to tell you in the comments on social media, in the DMs on Instagram, in the questions that they ask you. That's all intel. They're telling you their challenges, their pains, their desires, their wants. You just have to listen. It's better to listen than to talk. I feel like that was pretty good advice. Reminder. You want to be their go-to solution. And to do this, you have to let them know you get them. Your content shows that you know what they're going through and that you are here to help. The more you listen, the more you will know what they need. All right, moving on to step number two. Email your subscribers weekly and include a link to your blog post, podcast episode, or video. Okay, this one's important. You've done the work of creating your content, so you want everyone on your list to know it's ready for consumption. So let's talk about this. When you are creating weekly original content, you're doing it for two reasons. Number one, you're putting out new content to cast a wider net and to attract a bigger audience. You can't attract an audience on social media or to your website if you're not putting out original weekly content. So you're casting a wide net and you're attracting new people into your world. 
But the second reason why you're creating original weekly content is to nurture the subscribers on your email list. How many people talk about it this way, but it's so important for you to understand. When you create that weekly podcast, what you're going to do is email your existing list. I don't care if you have 10 people on your list or 10 million people on your list. It's important that you are reaching out to them. Every person on that list is a human being and you want to connect with them. You want to engage with them. So the way you do that is you email them every week and say, hey, I've got a new podcast episode for you. It's all about X, Y, Z. Here's why you want to take a listen. Click here and go check it out. So every week you are sending your subscribers a brand new email and you're encouraging them to go read your blog post or watch your video or check out your podcast. You're linking them to your website. And the reason why this is so important is because when you want to build that know, like, and trust factor, You have to have really valuable content for them to dive into, for them to really get some quick results so they think, whoa, she knows her stuff. I wonder what else she's got. So once again, creating original weekly content, there's two reasons to do it. One, to put it out there and attract a new audience. Two, to nurture the audience you already have. Now, about this time, you might be thinking, where does the list building come in? Where does the lead magnet come in? When are we going to talk about that? Well, we're going, we're going to talk about that right now. That comes into play right this second. But I first had to set up those first two steps, the foundation. You're creating weekly original content. You're emailing your existing list with that weekly original content to make sure you nurture that relationship. Let's jump into step number three, create a lead magnet and share it everywhere and often. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page, I want to make sure we all understand what a lead magnet is. A lead magnet is a valuable piece of content that you give to your audience for free in exchange for their name and email address. I know that most of you know that, just wanted to make sure. But here's some tips to make your lead magnet irresistible. Number one, make sure it creates momentum. It moves your audience forward. Make sure it's value packed. You want it to be really good. You want them to say, holy cow, this is so good. I wonder what else they have. You want it to be easy to digest. No 50 page eBooks because here's what happens. People get a 50 page eBook. They start reading it. They go down a rabbit hole. They never come up for air. And now they're not consuming your weekly content. They're not getting engaged in your world. So don't overwhelm them with your lead magnet and make it too robust. And also always leave them wanting more. You're going to give them a little, but then again, they're going to say, I wonder what else she's got. Now, if you are creating a freebie for the first time, I highly recommend you create an easy value packed free PDF, like a guide or a cheat sheet or a checklist. I'll give you some examples in a moment, but if you want them to look really good, you can design them in Canva, C-A-N-V-A, super easy design tool for free so that it can look good and it will be value packed. Now, Every single month as a partner of Faster Way, you get a really awesome freebie. And of course, you want to continue to promote those freebies month after month after month. But imagine if in addition to promoting the Faster Way freebies, you had a freebie of your own that you can use, let's say, for the next six months or the next year every single day in your business. In a moment, I'll show you how to promote your freebie or your lead magnet, but I just want you to understand the concept that if you're growing your email list every single day, that means your business is getting more powerful every single day. So if you're growing your email list every single day, imagine how much more successful your faster way promo will be six months from now when you have a bigger list and a bigger audience to promote to. So what I'm teaching you here today is to grow your email list with your own lead magnet while in addition promoting the faster way freebie as well. Now it's like a win-win situation. You just made your business even more powerful. So I want you to ask the question, what does your audience want most right now from you? Your audience, what do they want from you? 
That's the lead magnet I want you to create. Let me give you an example. This is from my friend, Chris Carr. She's a wellness advocate and a best-selling author. And she has a cheat sheet that looks like this, and it's 10 recipe boosters. And in her cheat sheet, she gives you 10 ingredients, gives you the recipes of how to use the ingredient, and then tells you a little bit about why that ingredient is so powerful. This is a very successful cheat sheet that she uses every day on her website, in social media, in her social media bios. She can mention it when she gets interviewed on somebody else's podcast. She's always driving traffic to this incredibly valuable PDF cheat sheet. You can create something like this in your own business. Here's another great idea. Rachel Cruz helps people save money. And she has a lead magnet that's called 14 Day Money Finder. So think about this concept, but for your business. So what she does is if you sign up for her freebie, she will send you a 14 day email series and every day a quick tip to save money. Pretty easy, right? So people are giving their name and email, and in exchange for the next 14 14 days, they're going to get a simple email from Rachel with a quick tip on how to save money. And she says the average person finds $2,000 a year. So it's like how to find some extra money. Pretty cool, right? So you could do something like this as well. You know, there are also challenges that you can do and quizzes, but those are more advanced. Why not just keep it simple with either a PDF cheat sheet checklist or guide or something like a 14 day or even seven day email series where you're giving tips and strategies. An email is a hot commodity. You want to make sure you're giving something of great value in exchange for that hot commodity so people want to sign up. I want you to ask yourself, what content would be so valuable that your ideal customer would say, I can't believe this is free. That's a great lead magnet. I can't believe this is free. This is so good. That's what ups that know, like, and trust factor. Now, right about now, there's a question that we should address, and that is, how does an irresistible lead magnet and weekly original content become the most powerful combination in your business? And I got to jump on camera for this one. Pay close attention. If you're multitasking, come back to me. This is the part that brings together your weekly podcast, blog post, or video together with a lead magnet. Because let's say you have a weekly podcast. Every week at the beginning of your podcast, before you jump into your content, you could say, hey, by the way, you know I have a free guide about XYZ, right? Go to this URL, go grab it before you dive into today's podcast. And you could say that every single week on your podcast. Now, don't think that just because you repeat it, everybody already has it and now it's going to be redundant. You're always getting new listeners and people don't take action right away. So that's one way to use your lead magnet on your podcast to get consistent leads every single day. Or you could do the same on your blog post. So let's say someone's reading your blog post and then at one point you could say, hey, if you like this and you wanna dive in even deeper, I've got a cheat sheet all about XYZ, click here to grab it. So in your podcast, you can embed a link to your lead magnet. Same thing on a video. Every week you've got a video show. At the end, you could say, hey, if you like this, you're going to love my free guide. If you haven't grabbed it yet, go here to grab it. So don't be afraid to repeat yourself. Don't be afraid to put that lead magnet out there so that your audience has the opportunity to sign up for your email list. Weekly original content and a lead magnet go hand in hand. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about promoting your lead magnet. Once you create a lead magnet that you know your audience is going to love and find irresistible, we got to get it out there. Now, earlier in the training, I said that social media is not as powerful as actually having your own email list in your business, but social media is a great tool for helping you build that email list. Here's what I mean. Instagram stories. IG stories are one of the most powerful ways to connect with your audience and grow your email list. And they're easier than you think. So I'm the kind of girl that does not necessarily love being on camera all the time. I can hold my own, but listen, if you gave me a choice of being on camera or off camera, I would typically choose not being on camera. 
However, I know how powerful it is for your audience to see your face, to hear from you directly. And one of the things I love about IG stories is you can just create short 15 second videos or use images. And then in 24 hours, your IG stories go away. (laughs) Meaning if you don't love how you sound or how you looked one day, don't worry, they're going away in 24 hours anyway. They're a great place for you to ease into using more video. So what I want you to do, and here's my challenge for you, in the next 24 hours, I want you to make a quick IG story. And if you already have a lead magnet, then I want you to mention it in your IG story. Tell people why it's valuable, why they must get their hands on it, and then do a swipe up or just tell people where to go, give them the URL, and they can go check out your lead magnet. I really want you to do this at least once a week. Remember, you can talk about the same lead magnet over and over again, but I want you to get into the habit of welcoming people into go checking out what you've got, whether it be your latest blog post or your latest podcast or your lead magnet. And when you don't feel like being on video, do what I do and just use some images or video of your dog. This is my dog, Scout. Sometimes I just don't want to be on video, so he takes my place. Okay, so here's another really great way to get your lead magnet out there. If you do a Facebook Live, at the end of your Facebook Live, you can say, hey, before I jump off, Did you hear how I have a really cool cheat sheet that you must get your hands on? It's all about XYZ. Here's the URL, go check it out. So if you do Facebook Lives once a week, then you could teach, let's say for 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you wanna do, share some insights, share stories, and then at the end of every single Facebook Live you do, you include what we call a CTA, a call to action. And that call to action is, have you checked out my cheat sheet yet? And then you go tell people where to get it. And you might even say, and if you've already gotten it, tell me in the comments what you think. What's your favorite part? I want to hear from you. So you can include those people who have already gotten it. But Instagram stories and Facebook lives, the easiest places for you to mention your lead magnet and tell people where to go to grab it. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to do a little Q&A, and I'm going to answer three questions that I get asked all the time when I teach the three steps of kickstarting your email list. Remember, those three steps. Number one, you're going to create consistent original content. Number two, you're going to email your list every single week and tell them you have a new blog post or podcast or video show, and they've got to go check it out. And then step number three is that you're going to create a lead magnet. And if you already have one, you're going to improve on the one you already have. And you're going to mention it everywhere and often. Now, when I teach these three strategies, I typically get some questions. And this question often comes up. How big does my email list need to be in order for it to be a success? The answer is It doesn't need to be huge. I have students who have had 300 people on their email list and they've generated $5,000 with just 300 people on their email list. I've had other students have less than 1,000 and they've done incredible things with selling their coaching packages online. So what I want you to hear is that you do not need a big email list for it to be successful. Even a few hundred people could make a huge difference. But it's not enough just to get people on your email list. That's why step two is so important. You need to nurture them. You need to give them consistent, original content so you can add value to their life. So just know, I would love for your first milestone to be 250. Once you hit that first milestone, your second milestone, 500. Once you hit 500, your third milestone is 1,000. Once you hit 1,000, it starts to happen more organically. You have that foundation in your business. You know how to talk about your lead magnet, where to talk about it. It starts to snowball in the best way possible a whole lot faster. So there are your three milestones, 250, 500, and 1,000. If you're beyond that, by all means, that's amazing. Keep going. Okay, here's the second question. How do I create the page where people sign up for my lead magnet? That page is often called an opt-in page or a lead page. And let me give you an example. Here's one of our lead magnets that we created, how to be productive working from home during uncertainty. And you can see this is a very simple opt-in page. A title, a little information about what they're signing up for, they click the button, get it now, 
and a pop-up box appears. We ask for first name and email, and that's it. When somebody clicks yes, please, we instantly send them an email with a link to the PDF. Before I talk about the opt-in page, one quick tip. Never ask for more than just first name and email. You don't need their last name. You don't need a bunch of information about them. And the more you ask for, the less people will sign up for it. So just keep it simple, first name and email. But let's talk about this opt-in page. There's so many different tools you can use. One of my favorites is ConvertKit. So you can check out ConvertKit where they're an email service provider. So they allow you to set up your backend system to collect names and emails and then email those subscribers. So ConvertKit is one of my favorite tools, but the reason I love them is not only are they going to be your email service provider, but they also have templates for opt-in pages like this. So you not only have the system to collect names and emails, but you have templates to make a page like this very, very simple. So there's a lot of tools out there. MailChimp is another one you can check out, but my favorite is ConvertKit, and they have a free service up to your first thousand subscribers. The next question I often get asked is, isn't social media enough? That's where I spend most of my time. Listen, I know, I know that we spend most of our time on social, and it's fun to engage with our audience and share our content there. But remember this, I'm gonna say it one more time. When you build your business on rented land, you are setting up a shaky foundation for your business. One thing I know for sure is that everything gets easier in your business. You can promote with more ease. You can attract an audience with more ease when you start to focus on growing your email list. One question I'm also asked often is, Amy, if you could go back 11 years and do things differently, what's one thing that you would change? Hands down, it would be that I would focus on growing my email list right away. It took me two years to realize the reason I was struggling with making money in my business is because I didn't have an email list. I put everything in front of it. I made everything more important than slowing down for a moment, understanding what it takes to build my email list and get getting to work, making it happen. So learn from my mistake. Starting now, start building the foundation of your business. These three steps are your Kickstarter to start getting people into your world in a more valuable way beyond social media. Social media is great, but your email list is so much more powerful and can be so much more profitable. All right, final question. Do I need more than one lead magnet? I get this question a lot. The answer is no. And what I want you to do is just start with one because because you are a partner of Faster Way, you're going to get those, uh, those monthly roadmaps. Those are incredibly powerful. Continue to use those and find new ways to use them in bigger ways. But as the foundation of your business, what you do specifically I want you to have one core lead magnet and I want you to link to it in your bio. I want you to talk about it uh, when you're interviewed on somebody else's podcast. I want you to embed it in your own podcast or blog or wherever you want to put it. It's the central theme that runs throughout your business. List building can be something that runs in the background of what you do every day, but you first have to set up your foundation. So the reason I don't think you need more than one lead magnet is because you're getting your faster way roadmaps on the regular. So essentially you do have more than one lead magnet. So just create one as a foundational piece in your business and then continue to promote the faster way lead magnets as well. It is a total win-win. It's the best situation. I was so jealous when I went through one of the roadmaps, I asked to see one and I was like, this is gold. This is so fantastic. I would love to be handed something like that every month and say, run with it. But imagine if every day you're focusing on growing the most important asset in your business, your email list, so that when you do actually dive into those roadmaps, you can see bigger results. That's what we're going for here. I hope that's valuable to you. Finally, I want to say that list building is something that once you finally dive into it, it does get easier. And I have a podcast called Online Marketing Made Easy. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. But 
all my podcasts, I talk about more list building strategies, uh, different ways to, to grow your audience and get them on your email list. So if you're looking for even more strategies to grow your email list, then join me on my podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy, and reach out to me on social media. I'm very active on Instagram and get into my DMs. Let me know if you have any questions or share with me any things that you learned. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so very much for for allowing me to come in here today and teach you my most favorite topic, list building. Good luck in all you do.